The movie opens with Liz unable to breathe while covered with a thin membrane in a cryogenic chamber. After a few minutes of struggling, she manages to free herself from the sheathed membrane and pulls out the IV needles protruding from her wrist. A few minutes later, the lights in the cryogenic pod turn on and the system warns of an oxygen failure that's depleting the reserves. Unaware of where and who she is, Liz asks the AI interface that goes by the name of Milo to let her out but Milo apologizes and tells her she won't be able to go out for now. As Milo gives Liz a status update, she gets flashbacks of her being brought to the hospital, agitated and afraid Liz yells in hopes of someone hearing her screams and letting her out. After calming herself down, Liz asks if anyone knows that her pod has failed and Milo informs her that a diagnostic has been sent and received, but there hasn't been a response yet. After gathering her thoughts, she asks Milo who she is but isn't able to get her name. Milo then notifies her that her oxygen level is at 33% and recommends lowering consumption so she doesn't suffocate. Liz asks what her diagnosis is, but Milo tells her the report isn't ready yet. Liz then asks Milo to open the pod, but quickly learns she needs an authorization code to get out. After some creative thinking, Liz manages to use the system's data line to call the police and convince them that she isn't making a false report and requests that they track her call as she doesn't know where she is. The police then ask her to tell them everything she can about the pod and Liz provides information on the manufacturer and serial number. The policeman then tells her he's going to transfer her to his superior, but the connection fails before she makes contact. After asking Milo to search the database for DNA matches, she learns that her name is Elizabeth. Moments later, she gets a call from the captain of the police force, who introduces himself as Moreau. Liz immediately tells him her name. Captain Moreau then asks how much time Liz has before her oxygen runs out, and learns she has 43 minutes of oxygen left. Captain Moreau then asks if there is anyone who might want to hurt her, after informing her that they've learned the cryogenic pod she is in had been reported destroyed over three years ago by the manufacturer. Liz then asks Milo to give her a full diagnosis and learns that she is healthy, has nothing wrong with her. Realizing she is trapped for no apparent health reason, Liz panics. Captain Moreau tells her that he has sent a team to meet with the manufacturer and manages to calm her down. Having gotten her breath back, Liz asks the captain if they can find the authorization for the pod. The captain tells her it's too early in the morning for the manufacturer, but informs her that they're working on a subpoena, but the connection is lost again before he can finish. The oxygen level eventually reaches 29%, which Milo considers to be critical and tries to administer obligatory sedation due to its programming to increase her chances of survival. But Liz realizing she won't be able to stay awake and help herself get found, manages to evade the robotic arm attempting to administer the sedative. 17 minutes after the connection failure, Liz requests that Milo show her everything he can find in her name and learns that she is a Nobel Prize winning biologist, a doctor in cryogenics. Seeing the photos, she deduces that she has done this to herself. Upon going through her social media, she finds a photo of her husband Leo and gets a series of flashbacks of their life together. After locating Leo's number, she manages to put a call through. The call goes through and a woman picks up and tells her to never call the number again and hangs up the phone on her. A few minutes later, Liz attempts to pry the pod open by tricking Milo into thinking she needs a sedative and breaking off part of the robotic arm. But the system induces an electric shock and stops her from being able to continue. Moments later, Captain Moreau calls again and informs her that they have managed to get the subpoena and have made contact with the manufacturer. At that moment, the oxygen levels drop off to 17%. Liz tells the captain that she's hallucinating and beginning to lose a sense of time. When Liz asks how long she has been missing, the captain informs her that she was active on social media a few days ago and hasn't been reported missing by anyone after her disappearance. As the conversation continues, Liz mentions her husband to the captain, but Captain Monroe tells her there isn't any report of her being married to a man by that name. Distressed by the revelation, Liz tells the captain that she had called someone earlier who picked up his phone, but the captain tells her that the woman wasn't real and attributes both the woman and Leo as simple hallucinations. The captain then tells her that she used to play basketball back in college in an attempt to earn her trust as he hears the doubt in her voice about all the things he's told her about Leo. As the captain continues to tell her about her life, Liz finds holes in his story that she doesn't believe. After being unable to believe the story the captain was telling her, 
Liz orders Milo to hang up the phone. For the next few minutes, she receives several calls from the captain, but orders Milo to reject all calls. Liz then orders Milo to replay the last 30 seconds of her call with the captain and realizes that someone in the back was telling him what to say. Realizing she isn't hallucinating, she feels a brief sense of relief. Moments later, the woman she called looking for Leo calls her back and tells her she knows that she is in a cryogenic pod. Liz demands she talks to Leo, but the woman first states it's impossible and pleads with Liz to listen to her, but Liz hangs up the phone. The woman calls again, but this time manages to make Liz listen by giving her the codes to open the pod, but then begs her not to use the code to open the door. She then tells her that Leo has passed away. Liz uses the code to get administrative control as the woman pleads for her not to open the door. Liz orders Milo to unlock the door, but then pauses when the woman tells her that she can prove that she is going to die if she leaves the pod. Liz listens to the woman and follows her instruction to access the centrifuge and turn it off and immediately experiences weightlessness and learns that she is thousands of miles away from Earth. The woman then tells her that time is of the essence as she will soon be out of communication reach. Liz activates the centrifuge and the gravity control. The woman then tells Liz that she was put into hypersleep so she could carry out her mission, but something went wrong along the way and she woke up. The woman then tells her that she designed the system and informs her there might be a way to activate hypersleep so she can survive and carry out the mission. Liz learns her mission was to colonize a planet 14 light years away from Earth, but she woke up after only having left Earth a few days ago. In disbelief, as the woman talks, Liz gets a flashback of Leo in military uniform and asks if the mission was mandated by the Ministry of Defense. The woman confirms that it was and tells her she was sent on the mission because the human race is projected to die out in the next two generations. Liz then learns the captain was only following orders after the Defense Ministry intercepted the call in fear of how she would react when her foggy memory returned and information got out to the public about the mission she was on. Liz then asks why the captain told her Leo never existed instead of admitting he died, but learns that the captain was only trying to kill time until her oxygen depleted. Liz gets flashbacks of Leo being sick, and a wave of pain rushes over her when she truly realizes he is gone. The woman tells her Leo died from a virus that was killing millions of others on Earth. Liz then learns that she has been in hypersleep for over 12 years not three days. The woman then urges Liz to help her fix the oxygen problem early, before she's out of communication reach. The two then figured out that she woke up because a processor overheated due to a lack of oxygen reserves. The woman then tells her to divert the cerebral activity monitor's processor to another non-essential function function. After ordering Milo to list all non-essential functions, Liz manages to deactivate them. Liz then tries to transfer function from the faulty processor to a working one, but quickly learns the operational processor isn't able to handle the capacity. Before the woman can tell her more, the military arrives where she lives, and the communication is cut off as she urgently tells her to deactivate all non-essential systems before the oxygen levels hit 2%. For the next few minutes, Liz attempts to jog her memory by remembering Leo. In her attempt to remember, she intentionally shocks herself and uses the pain to remind her. In a flashback, she remembers Leo being sick in a hospital room, isolated, telling her not to worry because they will eventually meet again. In a desperate attempt, Liz manages to remember her mother and make a call, telling her mother she loves her before the network is finally disconnected and the oxygen level eventually drops to 6%. Feeling helpless and hopeless, Liz decides to open the door to commit suicide, but changes her mind midway and orders Milo to find Leo. Milo tells her there are 10,000 other pods on the ship and tells her it would be nearly impossible to locate one. After managing to get a view of the ship from within the pod, Liz learns the ship underwent a collision with an asteroid. Milo tells her she is the only one that is awake, although others had died during the collision. Liz attempts to find Leo in one of the pods, but quickly realizes there are too many for her to find him manually. Focusing, she manages to remember the pod number and finds Leo still in his cocoon. Liz is ecstatic that Leo is alive, but notice that he doesn't have the scars on his face, she remembers. Liz then puts in another search request for her name and this time goes through a video database and sees an old version of her giving a speech about memory transfer. Suspecting that the woman who called her might be an older version of her, Liz orders Milo to run a voice recognition match and she has her suspicions confirmed. Liz quickly connects the dots that both she and everyone on the ship were clones sent to propagate life on the new plant. As the oxygen level plummets to a critical 4%, the weight of this realization overwhelms her 
stirring up a whirlwind of emotions. In a race against time, she hastily leaves a heartfelt message for Leo, clinging to the hope that it will find its way to him even after she is no longer alive. But halfway through her message, Liz gets a new sense of purpose and will to live, and asks to see the list of non-essential functions. But before she can finish, the oxygen level drops to 3%, and Milo counts down to launch a euthanasia protocol. In a critical moment, Liz skillfully detaches the intravenous tubes linked to her body, just moments before the euthanasia substance reaches her system. After removing the tubes in the nick of time, Liz manages to buy herself valuable moments to devise a plan for her escape or seek further assistance. After identifying the processor used for euthanasia and all disaster controls, L after realizing that redirecting the oxygen from pods with deceased occupants would require a considerable amount of time, she promptly instructs Milo to initiate the hypersleep protocol. Liz takes immediate action to implement the necessary measures for safety and reassign the function. After Milo shares details about the planet they will soon call home, Liz enters hypersleep. The movie concludes on a hopeful note as Liz reunites with Leo on on the new planet, eagerly contemplating their future and the future of humanity, while approaching it with both hope and caution. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our recap. Like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.